three spinal injuries in three, two, one. Good morning and welcome to Eagle Country 106.3's Eagle Eye News at 7. It's every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And over these many years, we've been talking with Doc Saylor. We've talked about just about every subject you can think of when we come about pets. This week, we're going to be talking about spinal injuries. The backs have it. Have we talked about spine before? I don't we know. We might have. I don't know. At some point, we had it had to come across. So uh, I want to talk a little bit about spinal injuries because it seems like we've been seeing a bunch of them lately. <laughs> um, and in my world, the most typical patient that we see is going to be like the dachshund. So you know, if you have a dachshund out there, a young one, just be forewarned. But a lot of the smaller dogs are really susceptible to this because we think about it, you know, they jump up and down and up and down and up and down on the chairs and the sofa. Now think about that, okay? That'd be about like us climbing on top of your desk here and jumping down and doing that about six to 10 times a day. Or more. Now for you and I in our advancing age, that would be very uncomfortable and the <coughs> next day we'd really pay for it. But with these dogs, when they land, just the wear and tear and we tend to forget about what kind of feat that is physically for them um, because they just do it so much and then so then it, the, all of a sudden then the animals down can't walk so when the disc bulges and now I hate the word slip disc because it, it makes people think there's a hockey puck that slides out of position and it really in my world it's more like a jelly donut okay and what happens is the hole is usually pointed up to the spinal cord and that material squirts out and hits the spine causes intense pain and oftentimes the swelling around that spinal cord will cause paralysis or you can see what we call CP deficits where they kind of act like they don't know where their feet are okay and these are really important things because you got to get the swelling down if an animal is actually paralyzed where you can't move and there's no deep pain that's a surgical emergency okay they got to be in and you really need to cut those animals within 12 hours otherwise you're not going to be successful but a lot of these fortunately are medically managed but you do need to get them in soon now the big key okay if you have one of these dogs is you still have to rest them long after they're better okay because remember the jelly donut example the hole is still there sure. and there's still jelly in there so that has to really kind of stabilize before they go so you're looking at least six weeks to two months or more of strict rest for that that situation to stabilize that how do you how do you make a dog rest especially one of those little dachshunds well a lot of times that just involves crate training but the other thing too is is, is uh you know keeping them off the sofas you go buy boxes empty cardboard boxes go behind one of the little you know stores and as they collapse their boxes go ahead and build those and just put them on the sofa mm -hmm. and fill the spot up and yeah i know it's unsightly but but again, so is your dog not able to walk or having to go around in a car. Sure. So, but crating's one option, putting them in a room that has nothing for them to get on or making the sofas, you know, getting up. Now, if you want to prevent these kind of things, right now with your little dog, go ahead and create steps. So they can, if you want them on the sofa, create steps to get them on the sofa because then that's less wear and tear for them. Gotcha, we'll be back right after this.